Hi, I'm Unpredictable. I, along with many other people, have been very interested in doing the Inferno on lower and lower combat accounts ever since scouting has been more widely known in the Inferno community. If you don't know what scouting is, it's when you wait in the beginning of the wave until right when minions spawn, then you remember where they spawn, you log out instantly, then with that information you create a plan for the wave, and then you log back in and execute it. This is possible because the spawns don't change once you log out and log back in. They actually tried to change scouting uh, and fix it so you couldn't actually log out in the beginning of a wave back in March of 2018, but uh, apparently the update didn't work. I don't know the specifics, but here we are today, scouting still works. So with that, I've been developing a plan to uh, complete the Inferno on an account around 40 combat. It's not going to be any lower than that. Uh, it's probably actually going to end up being around level 42 if I ever do complete it. I haven't actually started any attempts on uh, this type of account, nor have I even started making the account that it would, the attempts would be on. But I thought the plan was really cool and deserved its own video. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So without further ado, I'll get into it. So here are the stats I'd like to go into the Inferno with. They're not entirely accurate. They depend a lot on how well I do in not gaining XP uh, during quests and the fight caves before the Inferno. But as you can see, level 36, plus or minus a few. Uh, 40 range is the minimum for Rune Throne Axes, which I will be using on the Nibblers, along with Chinchapas once I reach 45. Uh, 52 magic is the lowest magic level you can have after Desert Treasure, I believe. Uh, 45 prayers for Evil Eye and the protection prayers. This is for uh, effectively ancient macing uh, during the Inferno, because I'll be using Eagle Eye on the Nibblers, so I'll need prayer restoration. And this is just a complete estimate on like the lowest hit points level I'll be able to do myself, reasonably. And these are the stats I'd like to come out of the Inferno with. Again, a complete estimate. But uh, a range level that hopefully doesn't go past the magic level. The magic level will probably go up by one, because uh, I'll only be using it in specific cases that I'll explain later. And it's very close to 53, right when you get out of Desert Treasure. Uh, some strength levels. Hit points, roughly calculated. Uh, you can't really calculate that accurately because, well, at least I can't because I don't know how many uh, monsters I'll be killing before the mage that it'll respawn. I don't know how much of a factor HP regen will uh, take on the total XP I gain, and so on. But level 41 is what this calculation comes out to. Could be 42 if my HP goes up a little bit more. And here is the gear setup and the rough inventory that I'd like to go into the Inferno with. Uh, it's probably a lot to take in, so I might not explain everything in this section, but I will once I get to the uh, sections involving the problems to solve in the waves and on Zok. Uh, what I'm wearing seems pretty intuitive, uh, I think, except for probably the Mithril crossbow with the emerald bolts. Uh, that, along with the Addy crossbow and the ruby and diamond bolts in the bolt patch, um, are pretty much normal. Well, maybe not normal, but uh, understandable. The Mythical Crossbow is here because pre-45 range for Chinchampas, I don't have anything with high enough attack range to safe spot the Inferno Bats. So, at least to me, I think it is uh, worth an inventory slot to bring this, just to attack those. It is also higher DPS than a Rune Throne Axe, so that's going to be nice. The Emerald Bolts are specifically unenchanted because... Uh, the special attack doesn't do anything in the Inferno anyway, and the sound might mess me up when I'm prayer flicking. The Rune Throne Axes and the Chinchampas are there mostly for killing the Nibblers. The Chinchampas I won't be able to use until I gain 5 range levels, maybe 4 depending on which range level I go in with, uh, but they're there for the later waves. They're also there for the Zuck fight for aggroing the Mage in the Range minions at specific times. The Ancient Mace is there because I'll be using offensive range prayers on each wave on the Nibblers because they'll either be hitting me or they'll be hitting pillars, both of which I want to minimize damage on. The Imbued Heart is there for 
of raising my magic level up enough so that I can cast Blood Blitz, which I think is the only spell I'm going to be bringing with me. Uh, the bolt pouch, again, as I explained, just holds those uh, diamond and ruby bolts for when I can use them with the adamant crossbow. The rune pouch holds the runes for the blood blitz. And this little guy is a reward token from the Gnome Restaurant minigame. Uh, with this, you can basically have 10 random known food uh, teleported to you at any time, and it works in the Inferno. So this is much better than a brew in one inventory slot, it actually averages 91.5 uh, hit points healed for one inventory slot, but it's uh, it has some conditions on it that I have to work around, and I'll explain that later. I won't be using it in Tilt Socks, so it'll be covered in that section. And after that, there's just the assortment of uh, pretty standard potions. I forgot to in include this sack of cabbages as well. Uh, this is to tick eat the rangers while scouting in wave 50+. plus. Uh, to use it, I'd have to make sure that I'm not full health going into that wave, but I don't think that should be a problem as long as I uh, remember to do so. I haven't quite decided whether it should be a sack of cabbages or a basket of strawberries, a sack of cabbages being better for more tick eats, strawberries being better for uh, healers, say, something just besides tick eating. But either way, one of them I think should be there. Alright, that's enough of explaining the setup for now without any more context. Now I'll get into the waves. In this section, I'll describe the plan for the minion waves of the Inferno and how I plan to address the problems that come up from trying to complete the Inferno in these waves with such a low level account. The general plan for these waves is going to begin with scouting if needed, which is going to happen much more often than not because it's almost always worth the risk to pillar health to scout when I can neither freeze the nibblers, nor chase them if they, with such a low HP level, if they go out of my immediate reach. Once that's done, I'm going to need to find a safe place to start the wave, and then once the nibblers spawn, kill those ASAP. Hopefully I can do that before uh, killing anything else. And then once that's done, uh, then I finally work on the minions. This plan should be okay for the lower waves, but with such a low range level and no way to freeze the nibblers, Losing the pillars eventually will be inevitable. So the plan needs to include a strategy for these waves after I lose the pillars. One of the more annoying problems is the nibblers attacking the character once all the pillars are dead. So I'm going to have to be vigilant and only let the pillars go down once my HP level is high enough to kill the nibblers uh, before they kill me with the rune battle axes and the chins. The other main problem with continuing without pillars is positioning myself with the other minions in a way that I can inflict them all effectively. There are two main problems with this, the melee and the bats. It should usually be possible to effectively deal with either bats or a melee, because if there are bats and no melee, you can usually just trap them behind something and be okay, because they never move. With a melee and no bats, you can usually run around while it's digging and keep safe spotting it. But when you have both of them together, it becomes a little bit more difficult because you can't run around safe spotting the melee if you're going to get attacked by bats when doing it. If there are no blobs, then it's usually solvable by just setting up a triple flick between the mages, the ranges, and the melees. But if there are blobs, it becomes a lot more difficult once again. So at the beginning of the wave, assuming I can get to a place where I'm being attacked by neither the bat nor the melee, the only problem is the melee digging. Now sometimes we'll be able to solve this by just letting the melee dig and running around and there will be places we can run to where we won't get hit by bats too much to die. But sometimes that won't be possible and that's where the strategy comes in. Now when you're flicking a mage range in a blob, it's a 12 tick cycle because it's a 4 tick cycle for the mage and range and a 6 tick cycle for the blob. So together it's a 12 tick cycle. But in this 12 tick cycle, there's always ticks where you don't need to be praying against any of them. So it's on these ticks where I plan to walk into the range of the melee, pray melee, and then walk back, resetting its timer on digging. And in between these melee flicks, I'll be able to attack things and make progress. That's simplifying a lot. There's a lot of different variations of this 12 tick flick cycle. 
but there's always those empty ticks where I can pray against the melee and reset it. In some solutions, I'll also have to do some other somewhat creative stuff, such as walk into specific squares in the melee aggro range to not get hit by a bat, or doing other luring methods to make sure that I'm already safe spotted from a bat. I'm not saying it will be possible to solve every wave in this fashion, it probably won't be, but I believe it is likely. This flecking pattern also won't be easy to pull off, and because it's going to be different for most of the times I'll have to do it, I'll most likely have to log on to another account and practice it before each wave where I think I have to do it. Another issue is how to heal up during the waves. The main method will sadly be natural HP regen with a regen bracelet, but hopefully in the no pillar waves I'll have magic XP to spare so that I can blood rush and not have to have natural HP regen be the main method while flicking a minion. That accounts for the damage taken during a wave, but you can also take damage during scouting if your praying mage and a ranger hits you. Now this is, I think, the only thing that makes blood rush absolutely necessary, because without it, you would be just hoping that this wouldn't happen very often, and when it did, you would be using bruise to heal up, unless you wanted to start the wave with very, with very low HP, and that's not going to happen. So to heal up after this, you would be logging in, blood rushing something, and then immediately logging out, similar to scouting. And with all this, hopefully there's a decent enough chance of completing the waves with 40-ish combat. Now since the single jad and triple jad fights aren't any different in this attempt than any other low-level attempt, I'll get right into the plan for Zuck. Now while nothing else is alive, the mage and range sets aren't too much of a problem. So the main problems are slow jad DPS, and slow healers DPS combined with uh, not being able to heal very much with bruise. Now there are two ways to solve this slow jad DPS problem. One is to n just never kill jad and just flick him along with everything else until Zuck is killed, but I personally don't think I could do that. I think I would take too much damage from healers and die. So the second solution does involve killing jad, but first you have to lure two pre-jad mages onto the squares where the jad healers spawn that way, either the healers can't reach Jad himself, or after I aggro them, they can't reach my character. Now, the specifics of this lure is pretty complicated, so I won't be going over that in this video, but I'll probably be doing attempts over on my Twitch of the lure, so you can probably see the details there. Now, this doesn't actually uh, solve the Jad DPS problem, this just makes it so the healers can't hit you. To solve the Jad DPS problem, you actually have to set it up so that you can flick the next set of Mage in range with the Jad while it's still alive, and maybe consecutive sets after that if it takes a very long time. Again, the specifics of that are pretty complicated, but I will be going over it on my Twitch if I ever do attempts. Exact has also done this on Twitch before, so you can probably see examples of it on his Twitch page. Now that Jad is solved, it's onto the healers, and the solution for this is not very complicated. You simply attack them one at a time, and when you're on the opposite side from the healer, uh, that's when you eat the food from the gnome restaurant reward token. The reward token allows for much more food than one brew in one inventory slot, and it also doesn't lower your range level, which could be a problem for uh, healer DPS. You just have to make sure that you do activate the reward token at a very specific spot in the shield because it does stall you when it uh, goes off, but it does go off after a specific amount of time. Then once the healers are dead, uh, I kill Zuck from 1200 HP again, but this time no Jad spawn, no healers spawn, just the mage and range spawns that I have to aggro and deal with. And that's it, that's my plan for the 40 combat Infernal Cape. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. If you have any suggestions, feel free to suggest. And if you even want to try this, you can try it. That's fine with me. Uh, if you want to see me streaming either this or methods used in this or similar things, you can check out my Twitch over at twitch.tv slash unpredictable. A link is in the description. And a special thanks goes out to ExactRS and Adwam for inspiration and collaboration. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.